Thanks for tuning in. This is the fourth episode of the Humboldt State Jack Cast, presented by Humboldt State Athletics. I'm your host, Elliot Portillo, and I'm joined by three of our new coaches here at Humboldt State. Uh, the new head coach for men's basketball, Tay Norwood, our new women's soccer coach, Grant Landy, and our new women's rowing coach, Matt Weiss. Coaches, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedules and uh, giving me some sound bites. Uh, Elliot, appreciate you having us on, brother. So I'll, I'll kind of just jump into it right away. This is kind of a general question. You guys can answer it in whatever order you want. But um, what's been the biggest thing? Obviously, you guys all come from different programs. Matt and Tay, you guys have come all the way from back east and Michigan and Florida, respectively, before this. And Grant, you're coming up north from Concordia. Uh, what has been, since you've been here in Humboldt County, the biggest transition for you or the biggest thing that you've gotten used to? And what's your favorite kind of go-to spot in the area? Well, I think the biggest transition, obviously, is pretty obvious. It's it's COVID, right? So um, just uh, adapting as a team, trying to trying to be flexible as a coach, as a the team is being flexible and diligent, given given the parameters we have to work with. So, I mean, obviously, that's the most obvious obstacle we're all facing right now. But I think we've said it multiple times on our in our staff meetings that the players have been really unbelievable through all this and just their perseverance uh, through these times and in, in staying active and um, just just making making um, their way through this difficult period has been impressive and it's been it's been uh, across the board with all our sports yeah I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback with what uh, Grant said you know COVID has shaken things up a bit but a little bit more for me moving from the uh, east coast all the way you know, as far east as you can go on the east coast, south, the southern part to almost as as northern part as you can go in California. Um, the the climate change and you know the speed of the everyday activity from being in South Florida to coming to uh, you know Northern California has been a little bit of a change, but uh, adapting. Um, happy to be here and enjoying some of the things that I haven't done in the past from a hiking and mountain biking standpoint. You gotten into mountain biking more up here? Once. <laughs> <laughs> I I was on my face yesterday up in the community forest <laughs> on a route, and my bike went down. I've never been going down, down, down <laughs> into the ground. <laughs> yeah, I've jumped into some more mountain biking too, and I'm not great at it. I, I ride the brakes pretty heavy when I go down. Yeah, I, I've been going out with Shannon, and he's been he's been a good guide for me up on in the community trail. It's been, that for me has been a saving grace uh, when we're not practicing. Uh, my favorite place, obviously, is the water in Humboldt Bay, but uh, but the second place is probably the community forest and just being able to get out there. Um, and it, it has been, you know, Tay and I both have different things. He comes from Florida, I come from Michigan, so for me, fifty degrees, man, I'm out in shorts, I'm ready to go. <laughs> it's, uh, this is great uh, from a climate change. We get to roll all year round and practice when we're actually able when we're. COVID allows us to do that. So I'm looking forward to having a kind of a full rowing year rather than having to be indoors. You know, the beaches are a lot different in South Florida than they are in uh, Humboldt County. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't consider oh, these beaches as much as I consider them water holes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, Matt, you made kind of a comment a little bit about just um, having a full rowing season whenever that happens. And, and that kind of brings me to my next question for everyone is um, obviously being new hires, you guys have a resume of success at your previous institutions, um, and you've brought and developed a lot of high quality programs. Uh, Tay, most recently, you helped Kaiser University at the NAIA tournament accomplish a 22 8 record last season. Um, Matt, your rowing teams have been consistently at the top end of the Big Ten and nationally ranked in Grant. Um, being a national coach of the year in the NAIA is no small thing to look at. Um, I just want to say, what was for all of you, what do you believe was the major key and component to that success at those institutions? And how do you plan to implement that culture and that environment to Humboldt? Well, I think, I think you said it. Um, it is, it's creating the culture, um, creating the mentality of the players. Um, winning, winning, winning is a mentality and, and losing is a mentality. So um, it, it, it takes time to kind of build that uh, approach to the game and the preparation and, um, you know, get obviously recruiting is, is huge. I mean, we can, we can do the best that we do as coaches, but you got to have the athletes to be able to compete. So it's a combination of 
recruiting the not always the best athletes, but the right athletes. And that that's taken a little bit of time to figure out what that is at Humboldt versus at Concordia, right? So um, but but really it's about creating the the winning culture and the and the winning mentality. And that takes a little bit of time, but I, I've been impressed with our group so far. Yeah, like even once again to piggyback off what Grant said, you know, and and, and I and our sport, we say it ain't so much about X's and O's as it is Jimmy's and Joe's. Um, but I think the key word is the cohesiveness. You know, I tell our guys, um, I've I've been able to be successful in the programs I had with the with the same same ingredients. It's like you know, the pot of soup is the same. We got the same ingredients. The university is the bowl or the pot that you put it in. So. You know, same ingredients, different pot. Um, I've, I've been fortunate to win with um, with selfless kids that are, have great character, they care about their teammates, they care about their contribution. You know, winning is just a byproduct of, of doing things the right way. You never have, I never talk to my guys about winning games and losing games because it's an acclimation of all stuff that you did before you, you, you get ready to play that game. That game is determined by the preparation um, and, and the things that you put in. Obviously, we got to go out there and execute but um, the most successful teams I had are teams that cared about each other and were connected um, as a unit and, and, it, and it cared and loved their teammates. And um, when we try to change the culture and the dynamics of it, we try to find uh, conscientious kids that care about that, that care about, you know, making a difference and being something special within the community. Yeah, I, I you know, I think good coaches, which is what I'm just listening to two good coaches, it, it, everything's about culture and culture. It really depends. And it doesn't depend on your sport. You talk about the right people. And for me, I look at rowing and every day. If you've got an athlete who wants to come in and get better every day, every day, they're going to get a little faster. They're going to do something new from a mental strategy, or they're going to push themselves physically. They're going to find something, some way to engage into the challenge, which is practice. And, and if you have a, have a group of people wanting to do that, it's a really easy place to be. Um, and so that, and again, that's where, where you can put yourself in position to win because you're constantly searching for making yourself better. And so that's, those are the athletes we're looking for on campus, off campus. Uh, and, and the, the group that I have right now, really, when I look at all fall, the, the fall practices that we had were very short. We were, we were basically out of season training most of the fall, but yet they made progressions over every day. They got a little faster. So that was, that was really impressed with the work they did this fall. And, I can't wait to see them live. You know, we've been doing stuff on Zoom, on rowing machines. It'll be nice to see them on the water, hopefully starting next week. So that'll be good. You know, one thing we take for granted, and I, and, I, and, I, and I was talking to my buddy the other day, and he was talking about staffing and stuff. And I said, you know, I want to, I don't want a good staff. I want a great staff. Um, and it's, it's also about finding the right people. You know, people ask me what I look for when I hire assistant coaches. I look for, I want, I want nurturers and teachers. And, and not teachers like, you know, a high school teacher or elementary school teacher, but I want guys who are able to teach the game and, and develop relationships with guys and, and deliver that message. Because I think, um, yeah, we, we all recruit good players, um, but part of our job is to nurture and maturate that talent um, that we have in a program. That's how you have consistency across the board and stability in your program. So that when your freshmen come in, they've learned the ropes and, and when they become juniors and seniors, they're able to be the leaders and the foundation of your program. So it's important also that we have um, good people in the program, and good, not only student athletes, but you know, coaches and, and, and people that oversee it. The interesting part of the pandemic that's been uh, a challenge for me is just because the lack of the lack of time we have with the athletes as a new coach, right? You want to come in, create your system, put things in place, and it just it's a slow, steady grind right now. It's not, it's not a, Hey, you know, we got all this time in the world. You know, we, we just don't have the time or didn't have the time this fall to really do that. So it's, it's been a slow, uh, a slow building process as opposed to something where I think as coaches, we have a tendency to want to be in a hurry. Right. And there's got always a sense of urgency and we just, uh, COVID has really slowed that down. Matt, it ain't slow grand in recruiting. Grand just signed five new kids. They ain't even some campus. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, Grant, you had a nice big recruiting class this year. Yeah, I mean, it was – recruiting was – oh, man, it was so challenging this year for the coaches and the athletes. Um, and I kind of get it from both sides because I have a younger younger son who's in this class who wants to play collegiately too. And I, I've seen it firsthand about the struggles of the, the – what you know, there's no events and 
ID camps are not there. And, and so there's just not a lot of places to go and showcase yourself. And then, you know, we've been, we've been closed here as a campus for ever since I've been here in March. So your, your normal recruiting, um, you know, checklist is not the same as it was last year. So I feel really good about where we're at in recruiting. Um, the, the other tough thing that just listening to Matt and Tay talk about recruiting a little bit, you know, coaches will call me and say, so, Hey, what, what positions do you need to have filled? And we haven't played a game yet. I've been here a year. We haven't played a game. So how do you evaluate your team and know where your strengths and your weaknesses are and your positionally when you haven't played? So it, it's just been a, it's been a serious series of things, but I, I feel very fortunate to be here. Um, really excited about my group. And one thing is that, that, that coaches and athletes are uniquely prepared for is something like COVID. We, we get knocked down and, and, and disappointed and, and um, have to pick ourselves back up all the time. And so I, it, this group is, is, is prepared for this type of thing. Well, that brings a good point. You talk about recruiting and like, cause Grant and Tay, you guys have kind of firmed up at least some of your recruiting for at least initially. And, and Tay, I wanted to ask you this question is you essentially have pretty much a whole new team. You brought in some of your assistants, a lot of the guys coming up or this is their first or second semester on campus. Um, so you really do get a chance to, for the most part, start with essentially a clean slate. Um, and so with that being said, how excited are you to have this, this group of guys on campus that you can, you know, put your stamp on and, and really showcase when we do start competing again? You better ask me that next December when they play. <laughs> I'll let you know how, how excited I am about them. On paper, we look like Tarzan. Hopefully, we don't play like Jane. That's an old metaphor for you, Elliot, because you're still a young guy. So I don't know if you know who Tarzan and Jane is. Um, oh, I know. But, but excited from the standpoint that we got. Um, we're, we're at another addition to our coaching staff uh, coming up here uh, in, in April. I'm excited about the people that we have in the program from a character standpoint. I think we got really good guys in the program who, who are excited about being good student athletes and excited about um, competing here and changing the culture at the institution and the environment. You know, one thing you touch on, you know, we got we have a, a, a nucleus of guys. We have 14 new guys and a couple of guys who are carried over from last year's regimen, but but one thing that's common ground with them is are they all really good guys. They hang out together, they connect with each other, um, they pick each other up. Um, so I'm excited about the infrastructure that we have in place. Now I'll let you know next, I'll let you know in the next couple of months how I'm excited about them on the court. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. And I wanted to pose the same question a little bit to, to Grant as well, because you have a few returners that have been here for a while. You, but you also have obviously your class that just came in and a couple new faces on campus. And it's obviously too early to say just on the field what we're going to see. But how excited are you to see this group on the field? And who do you think is going to be some of the standout athletes and leaders for you this when we do start competing again? Yeah, I mean, we're we're really young. Um well, I think, you know, we're going to try to get to a roster around 28. And I think if we get there, 20 of them are going to be new. So it, it, it's um, it, it's a double-edged sword a little bit because you, you want some some older players who have experience. Um, and we're, we're, we're trying to cultivate that. I, it's funny that you ask because I just spent last night with um, five of my older players just sort of on a Zoom picking their brain and you know, what's worked, what hasn't worked. And so they're going to be really involved in, in what we're doing. Um, so the, that side of it, not having experience, but on the other hand, um, coming in and, and having kind of a clean slate is, is also really attractive because we can, you know, we can build, um, you know, those mentality type things I was talking about and approach to practice and um, approach to games that, that uh, you know, I think I can, I can give those guys a good, a good, foundation for that. And so I think it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. I think, um, you know, a couple of players that have um, stepped up in the fall training and I could see uh, doing a really good job is uh, Tana Erie. She's going to be a senior central defender for us. That position is a really important in, in soccer and um, she's, she's um, a good organizer um, and it's been really helpful kind of off the field for us in the fall. Um, so kind of looking forward to, to what she brings to the table as far as leadership. And then we're just, 
again, I think this spring, if we can get out on the field and cultivate some more leaders, that's going to be really important for us for the fall. The, the spring for us is really about preparing for the fall. Um, so if we get that opportunity to compete, that's going to be a, a big bonus for us. Yeah, for me, I, I so I, my roster size on paper is 25, but the ones that are here are 13. So my, my squad size, typically a rowing squad is 40, 45 athletes. It's really small. And, and four of those, four of, four of that group are all, all new. Uh, so, so for me, you know, they're the small group that's here on campus, you know, they, they've really made it their mission to say, we're going to, we're going to figure out what, what the Humboldt rowing is all about. And we're going to try to build this foundation. So when the group team does start to grow and gets bigger again, they'll, they'll really be able to help, help me out. Right. And be able to help lead, lead the group. And, and so we've got a bunch of new people, but with a couple of Malia Seeley, who's, who's a junior for us, she's really been great. I mean, we started, we were able uh, with NCAA rules to do something new last year where we could do virtual practices throughout the summer. And so she made every one of them and she is really leading on the, on the computer, you know, getting people there. Uh, and, and then when we're on the water, she's leading out there too. So we have a couple of vets there that are, that are helping as well. So I'm excited. It's small, but I, but they're, again, they're really working hard. So it'll be interesting to see how they help make the program grow as, as the next few years come along. Yeah. I was going to say it because you came in, you, you might have kind of the unique situation here in terms of obviously your roster size. And in terms of there is less definition of what your recruiting classes look like. And from my understanding in the past, whenever I've seen the rowing team here, the rowing team has been very self-sufficient. They've been very adamant on getting out into the campus and recruiting on campus. And obviously they can't do that right now. Um, kind of going into you in an extent have almost the biggest shoes to, choose to feel uh, rowing is a program here. Traditionally has gone very deep into the national uh, competition every year. And I know you have a small roster right now, but what are your goals for, you know, two, three years down the line? Oh, well, the smallest team I've ever had in the spring has been 55. Now I have 13. <laughs> so, so for me, I got to, you know, I, it's, 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 it's recruiting, right? Being Matt, able, you might have to, you five. might have to jump in the boat with them. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, for me, it, it is, it's about building some depth. We just got to get people, we got to get people out there and moving and, and, uh, that's really my goal for the next couple of years, finding the right people, but also, you know, we, 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 the numbers have to go up and they will. Again, I've got great assistants that are going to work on that as, as well as me. So I, I think we're going to, it's just a matter of time, but to, to tack on your national championship, you know, they've won a couple of them. I'd like to win a few more. <laughs> I think, uh, I think we can bring some things to that. I, I can bring some things to the table that weren't here previously. You know, they did a great job culture wise. They, you're right. They were self-sufficient. They worked hard. Uh, I think I could bring a little more rowing knowledge into the mix, a little more training into the mix that will push them up uh, and, and just allow them to, to find another gear, I hope. Yeah, and that's obviously definitely the, the thing that programs look for is, is how far can we make it each year into the national tournament. And I think it's going to be exciting when everyone gets, when sports gets back to normal a little bit, just seeing how much each of our Lumberjack athletic programs can penetrate into that tournament. For me as a new guy, there's a couple of things that I appreciate. One reason I took the job is I, I, the group here, the group of coaches, the group of administrators, even they're very welcoming. And I just feel like all, even on Zoom, like I, I, I saw Kelly Wood, the volleyball coach for the first time today, like actual, like we were over COVID testing. We act, she's like, Matt, right? <laughs> As we're looking through our masks. But, you know, we've gotten to know each other over Zoom. And it's, that part has been a really positive piece for me it, uh it's just the community of coaches and the community of the administrators it's just it's different than, than where i came from um and i really enjoy it and that it's, it's certainly they've made humble kind of a special place very quickly well that answers everything i pretty much had um if you guys have anything you want to finish up on or add feel free i'm good i appreciate you having us on i'll piggyback that thank you um thank you for inviting us on the zoom um I look forward to when we get back to some normalcy and normality um, because I heard that uh, just the, the local community are huge Jack supporters. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing um, some familiar faces and some new faces out there. Um, K 
can't wait to, you know, get it going. Yeah, I, w- I was expecting my thought last when I got hired last January. I was like, well, because my wife's not with me. My daughter, I'm here kind of, my son is with me, but it's pretty quiet. I'm like, well, you know, I'll go to a lot of games. I'll get involved in the community. I'll do all this stuff. <laughs> It's just not what's happening. So I'm looking forward to having that happen so I can get out and uh, and meet everybody and see everything that's going on when it's actually when there's actually people around. We're looking forward to seeing all our teams get back out there and compete as soon as, as, soon as we can do it. Same as well. It's going to be a good experience for everybody, I'm sure. So thanks again, everybody, for jumping on and, and, and doing this for me. Uh, it's always appreciated. And uh, we'll be back to it soon. Go Jack. Thanks, Elliot. Thanks, Ellie. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.